your time with it. Not everybody wants what I'm selling. Can you believe that? Food. Yeah. Eat it. It's your sloppy Joe. It's food. It's your food. It's sloppy Joe. Yeah. Mama wouldn't feed you Nancy. It's sloppy Joe. It's your dinner. Damn it. Poor kid. Thinks Mama's feeding him poop. Now, when I talk about false prophets, uh, there are some people who, who whoa, I didn't, know, I didn't know what you're teaching. I, I wasn't aware. There are some people who think it's, it's not very kind. You're, you're not supposed to judge. Of course, my response is, the Bible says don't judge. But the part of not judging that we're not supposed to do is hypocritical judgment. So uh, Jesus said, if I have a big old plank in my eye and I'm worried about the little speck in yours, don't judge hypocritically. For example, if I'm telling you, don't be so critical. And, of course, I'm doing it while I'm being, what? Critical. Yeah, that's the kind of judgment you're not supposed to do, hypocritical judgment. But John chapter 7, Jesus says, when you judge, judge with righteous judgment. Judge righteously. You evaluate all the time. When you decided that this is not the safe row to sit on because I spit, you were judging. <laughs> not a bad judging. That's evaluating. You evaluate all the time. Is it comfortable in here? If you're cold, Sorry. You're evaluating. You're evaluating temperature. You're evaluating where you want to sit. You're evaluating what you can hear. You're evaluating uh, so many things. Judging is something that we do all the time. And Jesus said, when you judge, judge with righteous judgment. So when we're looking at false prophets, when we're reading the Bible, when we're doing anything biblical, we're trying to, we're trying to get a standard against which to test everything. If your speedometer says 35, brrr, but the policeman pulls you over and says, I'm sorry, you were going 45. Uh, does it count that your speedometer said 35 if you were going 45? Now you're going to get the ticket for going 45. Your indicator was off. For a lot of us, our indicators are off. We, we think we're judging righteously. We think we're evaluating uh, correctly, but sometimes we're missing it. False prophecy is like that. Most of us think we're not supposed to be critical. Thank you, babe. Most of us, you mean I need a Bible to teach? What the heck? How long before you would have told me I wasn't using a Bible? Most people think they're not supposed to judge. You are. Most people think they're not supposed to be critical of preachers. Psh, yeah, of course you do. Most people think you're not supposed to, if, if you do call someone out and say what they're teaching is, is incorrect, most people think they're not supposed to call them out by name. Well, Bible writers did. They called out false prophets. They said what they're teaching is not biblical. They called them out by name. So a lot of what we're doing over the last couple of weeks is looking at how false prophets steal your freedom. I'm saying that because that's what God said through Peter. Peter said that false prophets are working really hard to drag you into hell with them. And if they can't, believer, they're going to try to, to uh, rob your freedom. They're going to try to chain you. They're going to try to convince you that the good things that mama's offering you are poopy. It's good. It's, trust me, it's good. But a lot of people don't have the right indicators and so they can't tell. So that's one of the reasons we're doing this. Most people think that I'm just a judgmental, critical, miserable preacher that doesn't like something that he doesn't understand. And while that's very true, uh, there, there's, there's something more to it than that. I'm not going to be married at all. Why? I don't want to be married. Are you kidding? I thought you wanted to be exactly. a dad. I would be Make scared. It so she can see me. Why? Well, because... I don't want to kiss anyone. How come? Well, if they kiss me, they they sometimes do it with spit. I don't need a wife. I don't need a wife. Well, now he's probably got it together. He probably can already tell that he doesn't want to kiss because sometimes they use spit, and he doesn't need a wife. Some people think that that's the way I sound when I'm teaching about false prophets, when I'm teaching how to evaluate biblically. I'm just a, a, a miserable, grumpy, judgmental, critical guy that just doesn't like anything he doesn't understand. Uh, let me go out of my way to tell you that most of the stuff that uh, I'm teaching you, most of the stuff that I watch these guys do, I've been watching for almost 40 years. I, I'm not just a, a, a crunchy old Baptist preacher. I am that. 
but I'm a critical, crunchy Baptist preacher that watches these guys. I read their magazines. I listen to their sermons. I evaluate them. There's some good stuff. I mean, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Yeah, Even a false prophet can teach truth. But God wants us to be very, very careful, not be sucked away with error, not be uh, uh, robbed of our freedom by error. Well, how, how are you going to know what's being taught? Now, I don't, think that's, I don't think you need to go running into the bars just to find out what sin looks like. You, you don't have to do that. On the other hand, uh, to be able to tell if someone is, is lying to you, is that a good thing? Is it, is it a good thing if you can tell if someone is lying to you? If they lie to you, it's not a good thing. Is it good to know if they're lying to you? Yeah. Or do you appreciate someone who lies well? And, yeah. So Lauren has been watching it on the top of a thousand other things she's been watching. How to, how to evaluate, uh, well, liars. I think there's a slicker way to say that. But uh, uh, facial expressions, uh, body language, uh, when a person's uncomfortable, when a person's lying. So every time, uh, every afternoon, she'll come home with, with some new, you know, tidbit that she's learned, some new uh, principle. And so I practice all of them in front of the mirror so that she can't tell when I'm lying to her. So, for example, I'll tell the truth and I'll move my shoulder like that because that's supposed to be a bad thing. You know, I'll, I keep my eyes squinted all the time so she can't tell. Nah. Good liars, false prophets, they learn how to lie. That's what God says. They learn how to lie. So all the stuff I'm telling you is not just because I don't agree with it or I don't understand it. The stuff that I'm telling you, I'm telling you because I believe that when you compare what they're teaching against the Word of God, you're going to find, you're going to find that it's, it's not only is it a good idea for you not to listen to them very much, but God really wants us to stand against them. That's where most are not going to like what I'm teaching. You could, you could make it through another half hour or so teaching it. Yeah, whatever. Psst, psst. I believe God wants you to stand against these guys with people in your families, people that you know, people that you care about. Because while you might not get sucked in, uh, people that you care about are. Matthew 24, Jesus said, look, many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Peter said it like this, but there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies. They're gonna come in and they're gonna teach stuff that you can't tell is destructive. It's destroying you. It's, it's a heresy, it's a false biblical teaching. They will even deny the sovereign Lord. They're even gonna turn their back on the one that they're preaching about. They'll deny the sovereign Lord who, who paid the price for them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct. This is why it's important for you not only to know what false preaching is, but to, but to have the guts to stand against them. You gotta call them out. You gotta, you gotta call them by name. You gotta tell people that you care about, don't listen to them. Or if you're listening to them, you need to know they're teaching this. You need to know they're teaching that. Many will follow their depraved conduct if they're not protected, and they will bring the way of truth into disrepute. Unbelievers think the church is a mess. Why? Two reasons. One, the church is a mess. Two, I mean, I'm talking about believers who don't live like believers. And, and two, false prophets are making us look stupid. These are the guys who have the TV channels. These are the guys who have the radio stations. Careful. Why are they doing this, these false prophets? Verse 3, in their greed, these teachers will exploit you, take advantage of you. How are they going to do that? By making up stories. You'd think that by now, after, after growing up, that, that, that we would be able to tell a made-up story from the truth. Evidently not. Let me start by saying God hates false prophets. He hates them. He doesn't tolerate them. He hates them. God hates false prophets. And I think He wants us to be in that camp. Matthew 7, 15. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing. They look harmless, but they're not because inwardly they're ferocious, they're ravenous wolves. They want to tear you apart. So can you tell a real preacher from a fake preacher? Now, his buddies knew, his friends, huh? His friends knew it was a fake snake, but he didn't know. Stepped on the thing and it freaked him out. Can you tell a fake preacher from a real preacher? Can you tell a false prophet from a true prophet? Um, 
fake preachers, false prophets, offer a faith that often seems like uh, magic. Sing another melody completely So different from the one they're always singing I close my eyes and think that I have found me But then I feel mortality surround me I want to sing another melody So different from the one I always sing But when I do the dishes Nice. Fake preachers offer a faith that often seems like magic how you can be healed, how you can have a better life, how you can feel better about yourself. I mean, it doesn't work for, for, for the ordinary mortal. It doesn't work for people in the real world. But if you believe them, even better, if you send them a check, you can be healed. You can be healthy. You can be wealthy. You can be blessed in ways that nobody else is blessed. All you have to do is send a check. Why can't you just bless me without the check? That's not the way it works. Well, how does it work? You know, you probably won't understand it. The Lord told me the Lord showed me they offer a faith that often seems like magic. I don't think I told you this yet, but God hates false prophets. God hates them. He doesn't just hate the teaching. He hates the false prophet. This is going to take a bit, but this week you might want to go back and take a look at Ezekiel chapter 13. I'm going to read it for you. I'm going to read the entire chapter. Kind of, kind of sit tight and, and follow through with me. This is a few years before now. Yeah, it's a few hundred years ago. But God is writing to His people Israel, and He's telling them why He hates false prophets. This message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, prophesy against the false prophets. Uh, prophecy against the false prophets of Israel who were inventing their own prophecies. Where are they getting their teachings? They're inventing it. They're making them up. Say to them, listen to... Uh, he's, God is telling the true prophet to tell the false prophets, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. What sorrow awaits the false prophets who are following their own imaginations? And they have seen nothing at all. These guys are saying, God showed me a vision. And God is saying, I didn't show them anything. These guys are making junk up out of their own imaginations. Verse 4, O people of Israel, these prophets of yours are like jackals digging in the ruins. They've done nothing to repair the breaks in the walls around the nation. Uh, God is going to use an analogy of a broken wall, a, a wall that's built to protect the people of Israel. He's picturing these false prophets as jackals who are, who are coming and digging in the ruins. God is saying that a true prophet will help you rebuild the wall, biblically, knowing biblical truth. A true prophet will help you rebuild the wall so you're not as vulnerable to the wolves. But these guys are going to come to you, making all of this stuff up. They have done nothing, verse 5, they've done nothing to repair the breaks in the walls around the nation. They've done nothing to protect. In fact, they've not helped it to stand firm in the battle on the day of the Lord. Instead, instead of helping you rebuild the wall, they've told lies and they've made false predictions. They say, this is the message from the Lord, even though the Lord never sent them. And yet they expect Him, God, to fulfill their prophecy. 7. Can your visions be anything but false if you claim the, it, false prophets? Can, can, your, can your vision be anything but a lie if you're saying, this message is from the Lord? The Lord asks, when I've not even spoken to you? How can you say this message is from me when I'm not the one talking to you, God is saying. Verse 8, so this is what the sovereign Lord says. I haven't talked to you up to now, but now, false prophets, I'm talking to you through the true prophets, and this is what I'm saying. Because what you say is false and your visions are a lie, I will stand against you, says the sovereign Lord. I will raise my fist against all the prophets who see false visions and make lying predictions. They will be thrown out from the community of Israel. I will blot their names from Israel rec Israel's record books. They will never again set foot in their own land. Then you will know that I am the sovereign Lord. Verse 10, this will happen because these evil prophets deceive my people. How? By saying, everything's peaceful. You don't have to rebuild the walls of protection. We're at peace. Everything's good. Verse 10, it's as if the people have built a flimsy wall and these prophets are trying to reinforce it by covering it with whitewash. Whitewash wasn't even paint. It was, a, a, it was lime and water. Uh, Jesus talked about uh, the Pharisees 
up being whitewashed tombs. So you take the tombs and you just paint it with, with the, you know, the lime and water and you just paint it up. Well, what happens the first time it rains? Well, it washes away. These guys, instead of trying to reinforce the fence and the wall to protect you, they're just covering over with whitewash. 11, you tell these whitewashers that their wall will soon fall down. A heavy rainstorm, judgment, will undermine it. Great hailstones and mighty winds will knock it down. And when the wall falls, the people will cry out, what happened to your whitewash? Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says in verse uh, 13. I will sweep away your whitewashed wall with a storm of indignation. Does God like these guys? Not even a little bit. With a great flood of anger and hailstones of fury, I will break down your, your wall right to its foundation. And when that wall falls down, it will crush you. And then you will know that I am the Lord. Fine, you don't want to build up the wall? That wall that you won't help my people build up, I will use to crush you. And at last, verse 15, at last my anger against the wall and those who covered it with whitewash will be satisfied. Then I will say to you, the wall and those who whitewashed it are both gone. They were like prophets. They claimed peace would come to Jerusalem when there was no peace. I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken. Now, son of man, speak out against the women who prophesy from their own imaginations. That was against the dudes, now the dudettes. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. What sorrow awaits you women who are ensnaring the souls of my people, young and old alike. You tie magic charms on their wrists, then you furnish them with magic veils. Do you think that you can trap others without bringing destruction on yourselves? You bring shame on me. False prophets make God look bad. You bring shame on me, God says, and among my people. For what? So that you can profit from them? For a few handfuls of barley so they'll send you a check so that you could buy a little bread by lying to my people who by the way love to listen to lies you kill those who should not die and you promise life to those who should not live they're not just they're not just telling they're not just telling stories they're not just preaching sermons they're killing souls false prophets are deceiving saints and they're destroying sinners God requires preachers to stand up and tell the truth. False prophets get up and tell lies that come out of their own head, their own hearts. This is what the sovereign Lord says against the false prophets. I am against all your magic charms, which you use to ensnare my people like birds. I will tear them from your arms, setting my people free like birds set free from a cage. I will tear off the magic veils and I will save my people from your grasp. They will no longer be your victims. Then you will know that I am the Lord. You have discouraged the righteous, false preachers. You've discouraged the righteous with your lies. But I didn't want them to be sad. You've encouraged the wicked. Instead of leading them to Jesus, instead of leading them to God, instead of leading them to me, instead of telling the truth, you've encouraged them to stay in that lie that they call their life. You've encouraged the wicked by promising them life even though they continue in their sins. And because of all this, you will no longer talk of seeing visions that you never saw and you will never again make predictions because I will rescue my people from your grasp and then you will all know that I am the Lord. I don't think I said it yet, but God hates false prophets. Why? Because they exploit the people. They take advantage of people. And rather than exploiting the people, they should be evangelizing. Rather than taking advantage of sinners, they should be trying to lead those sinners to the Lord. But the guys that we listen to, you really need to listen to them. It, it's not enough that we like them. It's not enough that they're encouraging. It's not enough that they're inspiring. Are they taking advantage of you? And worse, if it's not bad enough that they're taking advantage, are they evangelizing sinners? Are they really teaching the truth? Are they really leading sinners to the Lord? That's a question. Jeremiah 23, 16. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds and not from the mouth of the Lord. These guys will tell you what you want to hear. Lamentations 2, 14. The visions of your prophets were false and they were worthless. They did not expose your sin to ward off your captivity. They didn't help you at all. The prophecies they gave you were false and they were misleading. They'll not only tell you what you want to hear, they won't tell you what you need to hear. 
they lie about what the Holy Spirit can do. Now, buckle your seat belts. I'm going to show you a lot of examples. Now, we're told this little one is filled with the Holy Spirit. It just seems so sweet. What did she do? Just watch her. Is it sweet? It, it's nice, yeah. Bring the volume down a bit. So these guys, these kids, are they filled with the Holy Spirit? Was the little one filled with the Holy Spirit? It was very sweet, but she was looking up, looking around. This little guy, is that what it looks like to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Everybody around him thinks this is just awesome. Praise God. kids to fake. There's something moving in this house. <laughs> I would to God everybody got this kind of blessing. You'll never be a drug addict. Never. You'll never go to prison. Never. Never. I'm telling you the power of God is here in the name of Jesus. Oh. And here's the thing, if you don't have your phone open, then you can't speak in tongues. And if you can't speak in tongues, how are you going to pray for people? Because the other day, me and my mom and my sister prayed 30 minutes in tongues in bed for, for a miracle. And it came the next day. Now here's the thing, a lot of you guys need to speak in tongues. Most of you might know it, but guess what? You can still receive more. Now, I just want everybody to stand up where they are. Now, hold your hand up like a funnel. We're going to pray. Lord, I thank you that you'll just rain wow. on them, overflow, so it will be a, a waterfall of your word, Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that you'll just give them their word that they need to praise you. Jesus, and I thank you, they'll go tell people about you and they'll perceive you, Lord, as their savior. Ah, woo, oh my God, woo, Jesus. I thank you, they just pour on them and, <laughs> and they'll just receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In tongues, prayer of them in tongues. Pray in other tongues over there. Come on. Lord, I thank you that they'll just receive tongues if they haven't received it. And I thank you they'll just start praying in tongues right now. Release it in Jesus' name. Just start speaking it. Come on. The thing is, the devil can't understand you. So he can't interfere with you. So God's like, excuse me. I don't know what you're doing near that child, but bye-bye. But bye-bye. Uh-uh, all the way over there, bye-bye. So I want you to just keep on speaking in tongues. Don't stop. That's when the blessings come in. Blessings come in. So you open your hands up like a funnel so the blessings can come in. So they can just come in and pour and pour. Now, where do these kiddos learn to do this stuff? Parents, huh? Others, I can't hear you. From the adults, yeah. I mean, they're, they're watching, that little baby. That, that, does that, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, my goodness. Is it good for our kids to be involved in church? Yes. Is it good for our kids to follow the leaders? Uh, it should be. <laughs> they, should be. they should be following a good example, yeah? So if, they see, if that's the way that you were taught to praise, well, okay. Then if that's the way you were taught to praise and it's okay to praise like that, then... Yeah, it makes sense that your kids are going to learn to praise like that. If, if you were taught that praise looks like speaking in tongues, then what do you expect? If you're teaching them to praise, they're going to pray in tongues. The problem is false teachers lie about what the Holy Spirit can do. A little kid, that little boy screaming like that, that's not the Holy Spirit. 
I've watched this little girl's daddy uh, preach for the last 20 some years, Rodney Howard Brown. Uh, he was the laughing preacher. He was uh, uh, one of the uh, Toronto uh, blessing guys uh, filled with the Holy Ghost. And, ah, <laughs> I got the Holy Ghost. Do I seem like I have the Holy Ghost? Just seems like I lost my mind, doesn't it? But when he did it, thousands of people said, Hallelujah, let's give him a check. Glory to <laughs> And then other people start laughing. <laughs> Okay, I'm not doing a good job of laughing. Maybe if I did a better job. It, it seems so fake, doesn't it? But these guys learned to do what they were taught. That's not necessarily bad if they were taught the right thing. But this is not what the Holy Spirit does. But this is what they're being taught the Holy Spirit does. They'll offer a spirit, careful, they're offering a Holy Spirit that feeds the flesh, that puffs up the pride. They must have thought they was drunk. They were acting like drunks. <laughs> Most of the guys today were influenced by this guy. Joel Osteen, Joyce Meyer, Marilyn Hickey, Kenneth Copeland, all of them. They were all influenced by this guy. Preflo Dollar, the Toronto Blessing guys, the Redland, California guys, they've all been influenced by Kenneth Hagin. Is that the Holy Spirit? Drunks fall down. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. And he's passing the Holy Spirit on. Glory. Is that the Holy Spirit? Now, if your kids run around in church like that, I'd expect you to kind of calm them down. But when grown-ups run around in church like that, what are you supposed to do? Calm them down? Evidently not. You say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, look at what the Spirit is doing. Now, why is it some people know better and other people think that's the Holy Spirit? Is it just because they were taught or because I'm just a crunchy old Baptist preacher who doesn't like what he doesn't understand? They offer a spirit that feeds the flesh and puffs up the pride. Now, some of these guys think they really feel it. I, I don't doubt it. They think they really feel something. What do you guys want to do that for me here? Is that the Holy Spirit? <laughs> now those 10,000 people, they're having a blast. They're having fun. Um, I don't begrudge them that. The question is, are they bringing people closer to Jesus or keeping them from Jesus? 10,000 people in there think they're filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, who the heck am I to keep people from the Lord? Remember when kids wanted to come close to Jesus and his entourage, uh, the disciples, tried to keep them all from coming close to Jesus. And Jesus said, hey, let them come close. Suffer the little children to come in. Such is the kingdom of heaven. Who the heck am I to try to keep people from the Holy Spirit? I'm telling you, this can't be the Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter what they feel. Some people think they really feel it. Some people think they can really see Here's that God is one. doing something. Look at this. My God, look at this. So you know it wasn't there before? Absolutely not. God just created it at your feet. Diamonds yes. appearing in look a church service. Anybody want to see these? I, I'm all right with it if you want to come look at them. They're big, beautiful stones. Beautiful. My God, here's another one. Look at this. And he's cussing while he's There's another it. one just like the one that we just found. Isn't that incredible, sir? They're finding them on the floor, in people's hair. Come on, somebody praise him. On the floor. Lord, I 
curse this thing now. It's the same guy. She's had a, a growth on her back so for years. Yes. Now how's it feel? I feel better. It is going down. It's going, going down. down more yet? It feels <laughs> better. He popped it. Look closely. Can you see the little flecks that are falling down, floating? Basically, what you have in the rest of this video is gold falling from the atmosphere, falling from the heavens. Yeah. And he asked this guy, "Is it possible that any could have been up? Anybody could have been hiding up there in the rafters? Could anybody have been up there hiding in the air ducts, uh, 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 pumping these gold gold flakes down?" Well, if anybody was up there, he was hiding pretty good because I couldn't see him. What did you experience him. in the Danny Davis Miracle Revival? I mean, I couldn't hardly believe what I was seeing because it looked like that whole back jaw looked like a big diamond. And I saw it just sparkling. And I said, where, where did that mouth. come from? And then I guess then when I went back to the last time and I looked again, it looked like it was all gold back here. And, and the Lord I, gave him gold I, fillings. I, I, I said, what was Why going on back Why didn't he just heal him? That, that Give him new happened. teeth. So you experienced gold fillings in your teeth today in this miracle service. Is that what the Holy Spirit does? What do you think about that? You can't stay neutral. This is God or it ain't. God the Holy Spirit is doing this or God the Holy Spirit is not doing this. If it's not God the Holy Spirit, you don't have a lot of options. God hates false prophets. Some of these guys think they really feel it. Some of them think they really see it. Some are just really full of it. I was in the room. <laughs> She's full of the Holy Ghost. She's prophesying. God when is speaking Spirit to her. the Holy Spirit first fell on David Roos like that, God began to talk to us. This is happening more and more in these uh, charismatic Pentecostal then churches. Then the whole foot began to move. Then the other one. The Dude, I'm doing that right now. Will be made low for that generation who prepares the way. Is that the Holy Spirit? For the coming. You gotta decide. It is or it isn't. And take this part of our city, and it's never been taken before. So she's really called outside the walls of the church, and I see that God's gonna take you to lots of people who are new agers, you know, into the whole touching me. psychic thing that don't understand. But you're gonna be, the, you're gonna be a represent. Look at us go here. We're like twins. We're like twins. Thank you, Father. It's like the lightning of God is going to hit you now. That's it's not like the fast lightning of speed. God. That's it's just what they're doing right now. It's discerning the times and seasons by getting a hope from God. Um, whew, getting, getting a hope from God to be able to see, to discern the times and the seasons that's ahead of you. It's just an introduction. It's just an introduction. Like just a table of contents. Of what's to come. Finish it, Lord. Now, the guys that you watch probably don't do all that. Maybe they do. These are the guys I watch. But the guys that you watch, unless they're standing against them, have been influenced by them. It's not enough to be, well, you know, it's just not my way. Uh, if you're not standing against it, you're encouraging it. You may not buy that, but that's what God says. God hates false prophets. You're either for it or against it. Some of these guys think they really feel something. Some of these guys think they really see something. Some of these guys are just kind of full of it. They'll lie about what the Holy Spirit can do. Look, this is not the Holy Spirit. But when the Lord talks to me, I obey Him. It's just that simple. There's nothing more to it. Fire, God! Are you ready, guys? Fire!
If I did something like that in a church service, you would just bring me a fly swatter. When he does it, people assume that he's throwing the Holy Ghost. I've talked to people, I mean, relatively intelligent people who've gone to Benny Hinn Crusades. They say that when he does that, they feel something. They feel something. Is that the Holy Spirit? Is that what the Holy Spirit looks like? Now, one of the reasons that it's so important that you, you recognize that you can't be neutral. You're for it or against it. He said in the beginning, when God speaks to me, I have to obey. Who's telling him to do this stuff? Who is he saying? He's saying God is telling him to heal the way he heals. God is telling him to dispense the Holy Spirit like this. This is not just a crazy dude. This is not just a magic dude. This is a guy who says, God is telling me to do this. He's a prophet of God or he's a false prophet. Once these guys step over the line and say, God told me to tell you, it's not neutral anymore. You want to really be careful. This is not the Holy Spirit. And, and this is not the Holy Spirit. She's happy, but it ain't the Holy Ghost. I'm going to get me some of that water. And look at the girl sitting next to him. Watch her face. Woe to the one who criticized the work of the Holy Spirit. He told her. Woe to that one. Woe to that one who criticizes the Holy Spirit. They would say that that's what I'm doing. Benny Hinn at one point said, I can't find the verse in the Bible, but I can't find it. But I wish I could find it. I wish God would just give me a Holy Ghost machine gun so I could kill them all. Talking about the critics. Paul Crouch, uh, TBN, said... And those heretic hunters, those heretic, they can just go to, and he said it. Wow. They've drawn a line. I'm drawing a line. It's not enough that these guys might be mistaken. Shoot, I've been mistaken. I don't, maybe. Of course we make mistakes. Of course we say stupid things. But once they get up and say, God told me to tell you, God is leading me to do this. They've crossed the line. They're either a prophet of God or a false prophet. Benny Hinn throwing that stuff, that's not the Holy Spirit. This was not the Holy Spirit. And this is not the Holy Spirit. I, I didn't know exactly what happened. They said uh, the car ran over her foot. Well, I just picked up her foot and put it in my hand. I said, Uncle Shadlamakasa, in the name of Jesus, you be made whole by the power of God. I feel that same glory right now. Mosharesi kamama bahotoreh I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost, folks. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost. Ashamed... If your engine is not revving up, you know what you need? You need a Holy Ghost enema Woo! right up your rear end. You need a Holy Ghost enema. Where he leads me, I will follow. And the Lord said to me, will you howl for me? I said, don't ask me to do that, Lord. He said, if I ask you, will you do it? He said, if I can't ask you to do something in your own house, how are you going to do it out there? So... God asked me, if I ask you to howl, would you howl for me? Oh, Lord, don't ask me to do that. Now, you can't just gloss over this stuff. They're telling you that God is speaking to them. Not just, you know, I, I think to do something. They are saying, I'm actually having a conversation with God. God talks to me. Yes, Lord. You ever watch Pat Robertson? Yes, Lord. 
Amen. Oral Roberts, remember Oral Roberts? Same guys. Kenneth Hagin, same thing. All of these guys, uh, Charles Parham was influenced by E.W. Kenyon. E.W. Kenyon was influenced by uh, 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 Phineas Quimby. Phineas Quimby was influenced by Madame Blavatsky. Madame Blavatsky has influenced most of the Pentecostal Word of Faith guys. Madame Blavatsky's writings influenced Nazi Germany. Uh, eugenics. Uh, Madame Blavatsky, Helena Blavatsky, channeled spirits, demon spirits. She wrote books that became a the theosophy. Theosophy became a, a way of thinking that ended up in political circles looking like Nazi Germany. In religious circles, it ended up influencing Charles Parham. Through Charles Parham and Brother Seymour in Azusa, you had the Azusa Street Revival. You had Pentecostalism spilling over into Baptist, Catholic, Methodist churches. Today, the stuff that you see, you may not watch guys this crazy, but Joel Osteen, Joyce Meyer, Kenneth Copeland, they've all been influenced by the guys who influenced these guys. It's taken a different manifestation, but they're following the same teaching. Word of faith teaching is dangerous. Word of faith teaching, we'll look at it next week. Word of faith teaching says that your words are not just encouraging or discouraging. Word of faith teaching says your words are just a power in the universe and they have creative force. God used that creative force that was above and beyond and outside of him to create. You can use that same force that's outside of God and outside of you to create. That's why Joel says, that's why Joyce Meyer says, that's why Oprah Winfrey says, that's why Denzel Washington and, and Marky Mark and all of those, just a ton of celebrities, a ton of singers, that's why they say, I can create my future because words are creative energy. They don't just encourage or discourage. They teach words are creative energy. So when you speak those words, you're creating a future and it will work. God's will, your will, doesn't matter. Be careful, your words have creative power. That's wrong, that's false teaching. That's a false gospel. This is coming from false prophets. So again, it's not as simple, well, you know, I don't watch those guys, and you know, I don't, you know, I just don't get all crazy like that. All of these guys have been influenced by the same guys. Helena Blavatsky, Satan before that, but Helena Blavatsky, Quimby, Parham, from Parham, Seymour, Pentecostal, Charismatic, uh, Oral Roberts, uh, Kenneth Hagen, down through Kenneth Copeland. They are the ones who taught the Joyce Meyer, Joel Osteen, any of the Pentecostal charismatic churches that you see today, they're all listening to the same guys. You, you, you can't be neutral anymore. Once they say, God led me, once they say, God told me, they are a prophet, either a true prophet or a false prophet. They lie about what the Holy Spirit can do. They lie about who God is. Check this out. Listen to what this guy says about who God is. They imagine an, an impotent God, a God that is not all-powerful. The only creature that God gave authority in the earth legally to is a spirit in a dirt body. That means any spirit without a body is illegal on planet earth. But here's the bigger statement. Even God himself is illegal on earth. Why? Because he is a spirit. And the law he set up by his own mouth was that only spirits with bodies can function on earth legally. That's why God could not interfere when Adam and Eve was, you know, kind of de deliberating on the fruit environment there in the book of Genesis. I mean, it, it bothered me. I'm sure it bothered you for years oh. as a pastor. Uh, if God is so mighty, powerful, awesome, omnipotent, omniscient, why couldn't this mighty God who made 500 million planets and galaxies could not stop a skinny little woman from picking a fruit to destroy his whole program? 
I mean, come on, God, aren't you powerful? You can intervene, you can destroy the works of the devil, prevent the woman and save humanity. But he couldn't. Not that he didn't, he couldn't. It's not that God couldn't. It's not that God wouldn't. It's that God couldn't. These guys are all influenced by the same teachers. They see a God that's not all-powerful. Now, they're not all as extreme as Miles Monroe. Miles Monroe died in a plane crash a year or so ago. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty big TBN preacher, big Word of Faith guy. He's saying God is illegal on planet Earth because God is a spirit. And because God is a spirit and doesn't have a body, only spirits with bodies are legal on Earth. I don't have the whole little teaching there, but basically he's saying... Well, this is what he says. This is why God is always looking for someone who will pray His will. Because God has a will, God has desires, but God on planet Earth is illegal because He doesn't have a body. So He needs you to pray the prayer of faith so that God then has legal authority to do what He can do. What? What are you talking about, dude? Okay, it's one thing for a crazy guy like that to talk to other crazy guy, Benny Hinn. But the fact that you're not following a Miles Monroe or a Benny Hinn, if you're still listening to the same guys that influence them, those guys are either prophets of God or they're false prophets. They imagine an impotent God. They imagine an imperfect God. Check this out. The Bible said he measured the heavens with a nine-inch span. Now, the span is the difference, the distance between the end of the thumb and the end of the little finger. And, and that Bible said, in fact, the Amplified Translation translates the Hebrew text that way, that he measured out the heavens with a nine-inch span. Well, I got a ruler and measured mine, and my span's eight and three-quarter inches long. So now God's span is a quarter of inch, a quarter inch longer than mine. So you see, that faith didn't come billowing out of some giant monster somewhere. It came out of the heart of a being that is very uncanny the way he's very much like you and me. A being that stands somewhere around 6'2", six, 6'3", six, that weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of a couple of hundred pounds, a little better, has a span of eight and, I mean, nine inches across, stood up and said, Light be! And this universe situated itself and went Kenneth, into motion. Glory to God. Kenneth Copeland just described God. How tall did it? What I did? Oh, thank you. I'm ready to quit. I don't need any more coffee. Hey, man, let's go. No, I'm almost there. Kenneth Copeland didn't just describe a dude. He said, that faith didn't just come out of some giant monster somewhere. It came out of a being uncanny, like you and me. He was about 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, He's got the hand span about like mine, just a little bit longer, about a quarter of an inch bigger than mine, about 200 and some odd pounds. He was describing God the Creator. Kenneth Copeland was. Kenneth Copeland is not just silly. Kenneth Copeland's a false prophet. When he says, God spoke to me. God told me. God led me. He put himself, when you say God led me, God spoke to me, you're putting yourself in the position of a prophet. These guys are either true prophets or false prophets. If what they're telling you is not from the Bible, that's good enough for me. They're a false prophet. But okay, fine. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. God spoke. To them outside of the Bible no but let's give them the benefit of the doubt if God speaks to them outside of the Bible and tells them something that contradicts the Bible they're a false prophet okay you don't listen to Benny Hinn you don't follow Kenneth Copeland but Paula White and Joyce Meyer and and Joel Osteen they've all been influenced by the same guys that influence these guys it's just manifesting itself a different way Every charismatic church, every Pentecostal church, they've all been influenced by the same guys. That's why they're Pentecostal charismatic. Because they believe that the Holy Spirit works in ways today outside, well, of this. 
Yeah, that's kind of a silly thing for me to say that this is the standard, but this is a closer standard than what you're watching there. They imagine an impotent God. They imagine, thank you, babe, an imperfect God. They imagine an incompetent God. I was shocked when I found out who the biggest failure in the Bible actually is. Okay. The biggest failure in the Bible. You know, everybody asks you, say, who's the biggest failure? They say, Judas. Somebody else will say, no, I believe it's Adam. Well, how about the devil? <laughs> he's the most consistent failure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but he's not the biggest in terms of material failure and so forth. The biggest one in the whole Bible is God. Mm. <laughs> oh, what, what, what? Don't you turn that set off. <laughs> you listen to what? You, I told you now, you sit still a minute. You know me well enough. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell something that I can't prove with the Bible. I wouldn't tell anything I can't prove from the Bible. Did you catch what he said? The biggest failure in the Bible. Not Judas. Not, not, not Adam. Not even Satan. God is the biggest failure in the Bible because he lost the most. Now, Joel Osteen be the first to tell that was Kenneth Copeland. Joel Osteen would be the first to tell you he's not a theologian. It's not his calling. It's his calling to inspire people, to encourage people. Well, you're still a preacher, and God holds you accountable to know the Bible. He listened to his daddy preach for 17 years. He messed with his dad's sermons to edit them. Not messed with them bad. He, he edited them. He went to Oral Roberts University for a semester or two and dropped out. But he was influenced by his dad, John Osteen. John Osteen was influenced by Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts was influenced by Kenneth Hagin. Kenneth Hagin was influenced by Charles Parham and E.W. Kenyon. E.W. Kenyon was influenced by uh, Quinius Fimby. Fimby was influenced by Madame Blavatsky. It's heresy. It's heresy. Politically, it ended up being Nazi Germany. Religiously, it ended up being Pentecostal charismatic word of faith. Careful! You gotta be careful. These guys lie about who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit is doing. They lie about who God is. It's not just that they're mistaken. These guys study to find their proof texts. They already believe what they believe. We can't help it. We're made out of people stuff. Preachers are made out of people. I don't know if you knew that. And we can't help it. You just can't help it. Sometimes you just believe something about something and, 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 you, and you're trying to be objective. You're trying to be biblical. But if what they believe is being borne out by these proof texts and what they believe isn't coming out of the Bible, it's coming from something. And I'm telling you that God is telling you it's not coming out of heaven. And it's not coming out of here, the Bible. You do need to choose. You may not stand up and say, ah, I'm voting, I'm voting against them. You may not stand up and you know, raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to. But in your heart of hearts, you have to decide. These guys are true prophets or they are false prophets. If what they're telling you is not coming out of the Bible, okay, maybe they're mistaken. That's probably happened to me a time or two. If what they're telling you isn't coming out of the Bible, that's pretty bad. But if what they're telling you is that God told them to say this, God told me to do this, they're a false prophet, and God hates false prophets. Lord, protect us. God, help us. God, help us realize that you have called us to truth. Jesus, you said you were the way, you were the truth, and you were the life. You've given us your truth in the Bible, and God, I pray that we would do a better job of recognizing that it, it, it's not enough to just say we don't go to their churches. God, you've called us to stand against false teaching, and you want us to stand against false prophets. God, I pray that we'd have the courage, that we'd have the boldness, God, that we'd have the discernment. God, I pray that we would have the biblical knowledge to recognize what is biblical and what is not. God, help us do a better job that we might be saved. Help us do a better job that we might lead our family and friends to you. Help us do a better job that we might protect the church from false teaching. We love you, Jesus. We're grateful that you've given us the opportunity to trust you for forgiveness, to trust you for a new life. Jesus, I pray that we would not waste any more of our life. God, you want us to reach people. You want us to reach people with the truth. You want us to protect believers 
from untruth, and you want us to protect unbelievers from false gospels. Lord, use us, use us, use us. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Next week, we'll finish up. in the dark A song that lights up the stars One breath that gives life